Good evening, everybody, and welcome to this week's edition of the Mike Bray Show. I'm Jack Nolan, joined once again by the head coach of the Fighting Irish. And, Mike, your team is on a roll right now. You have won six of eight games, including a gritty home win over Miami on Sunday night. A good start to what we thought would be a three games in seven days week for your team, your very hot basketball team, a stretch where you thought you could make a move in the standings. But you lost the Clemson game, the COVID-19 issues with the Tigers, couldn't get a replacement game set up. So it turns out to be another lengthy break for your team this week. You know, we just can't make a move in the standings because of this darn COVID stuff, Jack. And, and again, we have been – I have been very proud of our guys. We have remained pretty darn clean uh, since September uh, and, and – uh, available, but Clemson was not available. So we're disappointed, but it's not the first time we've had to adjust the practice schedule and adjust the psyche of our guys and kind of work on some things and get ready to go to Syracuse. Now, the good news is, as far as we know, the Syracuse game is a go for Saturday, but after that, both Louisville and BC are currently on COVID-19 pauses, although Louisville is still scheduled to return to action on Saturday. So I guess we just keep our fingers crossed. Well, talking to our league uh, yesterday, uh, they feel Louisville and Boston College will be back if everything uh, moves according to plan. So we're planning on heading to Louisville Tuesday and Chestnut Hill the following Saturday. Now, with all of the issues the teams are having with COVID, it is a tribute to your team, your staff, and the university medical staff that you are one of just three ACC teams that has not had an in-season stoppage this year due to COVID-19. I give a lot of credit to our trainer, Nixon um, Dorvillian, who we hired just recently, and our doctors. I I hope we have bonuses for him here uh, when, when this thing lets up, they have been unbelievable athletically. I know as a campus, we've done a really good job too, but in the athletic department, the trainers and doctors working together with testing. And then again, a lot of credit to our guys staying disciplined in their lifestyles away from the practice facility. I know any day that can change for us, but I cross my fingers and I light candles at the grotto that we can stay on this clean role and be available to play. Now let's move to the real feel-good story of the week, and that is the tremendous play of Nick Jogo against Miami. Maybe the most complete game he has ever played, a game-high 18 points, including a couple of threes and a bunch of aggressive drives to the hoop, plus seven rebounds, three assists, and two block shots. He's been good all year. He was great against Miami. You know, nobody deserves it more, Jack. Um, He has taken the reins of the captain leadership role as soon as we get back to school in August. He has played the role we need him to play. I'm going to come off the bench, coach. I'm going to defend. I'm going to rebound. If you need me to score a little bit, I will. I'm not going to shoot it. I'm just going to try and help us win. And then the other night against Miami, we needed more. And then he sensed it and did it. Uh, but I'm, I am thrilled for him because great attitude, has been a team guy for five years. And like a lot of kids in our program, they get to that last year and they have real good senior years. I, I'm thrilled for him. And, man, is he important down the stretch for us. Now, there is another guy who didn't really get a lot of postgame attention, and that's Dane Goodwin. Not only did he hit three big threes in the game, he also recorded his second career double-double with a career-high 11 rebounds to go with 11 points. Well, I mean, he, he continues to just get better and better. We played him a lot as a freshman, and we're starting to get return on investment uh, 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 of this junior. And um, he's always had a nose for the ball and been able to rebound. Uh, we know he can shoot and score the ball. I think the areas where he's gotten better, he's defending better and staying in front of his man better and fighting better in a defensive stance. And he's become a little more of a guard. When you look at his assist to turnover, he's better with the basketball finding his teammates. But as far as rebounding and scoring, we know he can do that, and we need him to do that uh, to make a run at this thing. Folks, our friends at NECA want to remind you that they are continuing their efforts to make our community brighter. 
It's what NECA, electrical contractors, do every day through donations, volunteer efforts, and by training the next generation of electrical workers through apprenticeship programs. The NECA contractors and electrical workers of Local 153 preparing for a brighter tomorrow. Now, Mike, due to class schedules, you will not be able to participate in our player interviews the rest of the season as the players cannot take part during our normal record time because they are in class. So before we go to break, I do want to get your take on tonight's guest, freshman Tony Sanders Jr., a guy who committed to Notre Dame without ever getting to visit campus. I'm very excited about Tony's future, and he's not playing a lot for us right now, uh, but he's invested every day in practice. He has to play against Goodwin and Wirtz and, and, and Leshevsky every day in practice, and that only makes him better. But he's an athletic wing forward who's gotten up to be a better feel for the game guy. He's better with the ball. He's understood our system now because he's been in it a couple months. And he's has an amazing attitude. He, he's got to be probably maybe the most one of the most popular guys on the team. And I think all the old guys treat him as a little brother. Tony is the little brother. Um, he they, they take care of him. They put their arm around him. And he has an amazing sense of humor. Um, I've loved being around him, and I think just a really, really bright future. And think about Tony. He still has four years of eligibility after this year, and that's going to help a guy like Tony Sanders. And something I really like, Mike, he's already proven he's ready for the big time. He's already given you some very productive minutes, good performances against Detroit Mercy and Virginia Tech. So what do you think his ceiling is going to be? You know, I, I think the sky's the limit. I think we could see a guy here really be a starter for us in time. He's that athletic wing that knows how to play. He can drive the ball with authority. One of the things he really does, and we're going to need in the future, is he can guard you. He can sit down at a stance and really defend. He's a very good shooter, too. And you mentioned we don't win the Detroit, the Detroit game yeah. without Tony Sanders. And, and he's – He's jammed up a little bit right now, like a lot of young guys in our program, with old guys that are just better. But as he's seen and has those old guys have told him, like, hang in there, my man. There's a plan for you. When I get out of here, you're going to be playing a lot. And uh, we feel certainly the same way about Tony. Folks, I will visit with Tony later in our show. But first, when we come back, we will break down Notre Dame's home win over Miami. This is the Mike Bray Show, presented by Tyrac.com the ultimate in contactless tire buying. It's time now for our game breakdown, brought to you by our friends at Meyer. The offensive rhythm that you had in your 93-point effort at Duke was just not there in the opening minutes Sunday night against Miami, but the impressive thing was your guys never got frustrated. They just kept battling. You know, a lot of times, Jack, when you are flowing so great offensively the game before, the next game – you can almost predict it's going to be a little bit of a dogfight. And early, we just – we had great looks, looks that we had against Duke, but we couldn't make them. And now you're going to have to guard and win ugly. And and I give our guys credit that we understood that was how we were going to have to do it and play enough defense to escape. Now, it seems to be becoming a theme in every game – that both of your big guys score early in the paint, and they scored your first four points in this one as well. That's a nice thing to have. You know, it is. And when you look at the field goal percentage of both Nate and Jawan, it's really staggering what they're doing. It's a credit to them to know who they are, and it's a credit to their teammates who are great passers to find them in spots where they're getting high percentage shots. However, those guys were not able to set the tone for you because they both got into foul trouble early. Juwan picked up two fouls and Nate three in the first half, limiting Nate to just eight minutes and just that one shot. Well, the team that leads the nation at least amount of fouls was all of a sudden in foul trouble. It doesn't happen much to us. And we had to rotate and different guys and Nick Jogo saves the day, uh, as we saw. Now, there was some stress involved throughout this game. 
And the, the big stress moment was coming off a career high 28 points at Duke. Cormac Ryan hits an early three and then scared the stuffing out of everybody. Irish fans watching all around the country when he went down hard with a turned ankle a couple of minutes after that three. I didn't think he'd play again in the game, but he went to the locker room and was back in the game three minutes later. Well, it's the same thing he did at Miami. He stepped on a guy's foot in Miami, played through it, but we didn't have him the next game because he was really sore. And he came back and played through it. But he's been sore this week. And, you know, I don't know, maybe the Clemson cancelization is a sign from the lady on the dome. He would not have played that right. night. He would No way he would have been ready midweek. But I think he's going to be real ready uh, in the Carrier Dome on Saturday. We've already touched on Nick Jogo but we have to get deeper in the Nick Jogo. This game would not have been tied at 31 at halftime without him. He was the one guy that shot the ball well, hitting three of his first five shots, including a three, but he did everything well. He grabbed six rebounds, dished out two assists, and blocked a shot in that first half. Well, no one deserves it more. His teammates love him. It was so neat to see his teammates, especially Jawan and Nate, who were in foul trouble, cheering like heck for him because he has sacrificed so much. He's waited his turn in our program, and he's been an amazing leader, whether he plays a lot or not play. His teammates love him, and it was even after the game to see them so excited for him. And I think we got something new brewing. You, you, know, you never say never. You know, he was a role guy. He's fitting in. Now, all of a sudden – He's doing a little more on the offensive end, and my feeling is let's let him go and let him be Ginobili if he thinks he's Ginobili. We have got some Jogo plays to break down coming up later in Irish Intel, one that really shows how his game has grown. Now, you've been really good in the opening moments of the second half this year, and this game was no different. Juwan Durham scored your first five points of the half, and he has become a consistent offensive threat for you throughout each game yeah he's really um again I'm thrilled with his senior year you know again seniors having really good years has been a a, a kind of a a, a, a a something in our program we're really proud of and, and you know getting it into him in key spots he's hitting his short jump shot as well he's getting on the offensive board he's getting fouled he can make free throws he is a great offensive weapon. And the thing I haven't even mentioned, he's a great passer for a big guy. He really finds his teammates. Now, in the first half, it really looked like a night where you guys are going to be as cold as the weather was outside. But they bounced back in the second half, 53% shooting. You didn't shoot it well from three, but you dominated points in the paint, 26-16. You know, it, it, it's kind of been a little bit of who we've been the last couple of years. We struggle a little bit offensively sometimes in the first half here at home, but we find our rhythm in our, when our offense is in front of our bench in the second half. And we really got the floor spread and got some good stuff. We got some drives to the bucket uh, and made some key plays. We lost the lead there, you know, and then came back and had a great run to finish it. But our defense was the key the last five minutes of the game because we were going to have to defend to win. Now, even though Nate Leshesky sat for 12 minutes in the first half, he didn't lose his edge. He was your top performer in the second half, scoring 12 of his 14 points in the game in the half. He grabbed five of his seven rebounds in the half. And after Notre Dame, after you fell behind by two with just under seven minutes left, Nate responded with a personal 7-0 run that gave you a five-point lead. And really, that run gave you control of the game the rest of the way. You know, that, that's a good sign of mental toughness. You're in foul trouble. Nothing's going right. But you're not over there moping or worrying about it. And then when you do get in, you pick your spots and you give us the lift to really give us enough room to win the game. I, I've really been proud of his mental toughness growth. He's more of a veteran now. And he did not check out mentally, even though he was in foul trouble. First time he was really in foul trouble like that the whole season. He waited till we needed him, and then he really struck. You know, a lot of growth for him this season. Now, there's no question Nick Jogo was the player of the game with a team high and season high and game high, 18 points, nine in the second half, nine in the first half, seven rebounds, three assists, and two blocked shots. But we haven't mentioned another guy who was key, Dane Goodwin. And that's in part because Dane had another not flashy, 
but very solid Dane Goodwin game. He recorded his second career double-double with 11 points, including three big threes, a career-high 11 rebounds, three assists, and he blocked the shot in 38 and a half minutes of action. He's on the floor so much, Mike, because even if he's not scoring, he does so many of the little things consistently for the entire game. Well, as you've seen by his minutes played, like Prentice, it's hard to take him out of the game. You know, he's just doing so much. And like Prentice, he's in amazing physical condition that he can play 38 minutes at a high level and play really hard. Again, Dane Goodwin's conditioning and physicality to be able to do that night after night is something that I've been impressed with, and I'm not sure that's what we were going to get out of him. Um, but there's a toughness about him, and, and I love how he rebounds, and he needs to help our big guys rebound the ball. You had four guys in double figures and one guy with nine, and that's the guy I want to close out with. Trey Wirtz had nine points, including a huge three right in front of your bench with 214 left, and that was what I called on the broadcast the dagger. It puts you up by eight for the first time in the game and basically put the game out of Miami's reach. I thought starting with the Duke game, Trey Wirtz is now comfortable, and here he comes. He played great in Durham, six assists and making key plays for us. And I thought he really, uh, against Miami, felt it even more and was confident. And he is a heck of a shooter. And his roommate found him in the corner for that three-point shot that really was kind of the seal the deal kind of shot. But I just think he has gotten now very comfortable coming from I'm not playing this year – <laughs> to his starting, to being a key guy. I think he's made a great adjustment. I love where he is right now, his feel for how to play in our system. So the Irish win their sixth game in their last eight outings, a 71-61 victory over Miami to secure a season sweep of the Hurricane. We'll be back with more on the Mike Bray Show presented by TireRack.com right after this timeout. Hey, Notre Dame fans, Tire Rack is the presenting sponsor of the Mike Bray Show, and like the Irish, knows a thing or two about passion and performance. Their on-site test track is their home court, and they've got a playbook that includes safe, no-contact mobile installation in many areas. Get your tires right at TireRack.com, the way tire buying should be. 6'7", freshman Tony Sanders Jr. has played in 13 games this season and started one. He has scored nine points, grabbed five rebounds, and come up with one steal in 67 minutes of action, including key stints against Detroit Mercy, Ohio State, Virginia Tech, and Miami. He played his high school basketball at Gulliver Prep in Miami and averaged 21 points and nine rebounds per game his senior season. He finished his high school career with 1,966 points and more than 500 rebounds while helping Gulliver Prep win three Class 4A District 16 titles. Tony, welcome to the Mike Bray Show. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Now, you and the rest of this year's freshman class have had one of the most unique and, dare I say, difficult introductions to college and college basketball of any freshman class in history. What has this year been like for you on and off the court? Uh, um, it's been a roller coaster, um, a lot of highs and lows. But, you know, as Coach Bray always says, stay in the course, um, just stay in the course, doing everything you're supposed to do with protocols and everything, even in the classrooms and just on the court and just always bringing our A game. So we've been doing that really well for all of the freshmen. So. Now, you've never really experienced what normal college life is like. How have you found all the COVID protocols to follow? Has it been difficult to follow all of the guidelines you've been given? No, not difficult at all. It's pretty much um, straightforward to the point. So I haven't had no troubles with that at all. So I've been doing really well with that. Normally, when you go to college, you play in front of bigger crowds than you played in front of in high school. But that hasn't been the case. Most of your games, you've played in front of virtually no fans. What has that been like? I guess um, I really haven't had the full college game experience, so that's pretty much a bummer. But, you know, just just having – just playing without the fans, is, it's, it's a bummer. But, you know, you still got to do what you got to do on the court if the fans are there or, or no fans. So just keep playing team basketball. Now, you were recruited by a lot of big-name schools and also received offers from Florida State, Georgia, 
Dayton, South Carolina. What was it that attracted you to Notre Dame? Um, um, yeah, um, the best of both worlds. Notre Dame is a very prestigious place to, to be at. Um, having a degree here is everything. That's what my parents instilled in me since day one. Um, education is first. Um, so with a degree, degree from here is, is just big for me, for me. So, and also the basketball component of that too, is just playing ACC basketball, playing against the Dukes, you know, North Carolina is just very nice. So you get the best both worlds with that, with the highest competition there is. Now, you never got to tour campus in person before you made your decision, but you did on Zoom and FaceTime. What did you see during that process that helped you decide Notre Dame was the right place for you? I knew Notre Dame was the right place when they um, first showed me that Notre Dame was pretty much family oriented. And that's why, like, I'm a big family guy. Um, Coach Hunt, um, Bray, they just showed me around on, on a Zoom call. And it, it was just nice. It was just, I just knew this was the right place where I can call home for the next four years. Now, while you never got to campus, I know Ryan Humphrey did get down to visit your high school. He watched you play a couple of games. What is your relationship like with Hump? Oh, Hump and I have a, a close relationship. Hump's my guy. He's, he's, a, he's a little comedian, too. So it's just, it's just so funny. We have a good relationship. So that's, that's why I like. And he is a really big family guy. Did you notice that right away? I noticed that right away, right away. Now, you're from Miami, so I have to ask you, what do you think of the weather we've been having the last couple of weeks? Oh, brutal, very brutal. But um, you know, I'm I'm not really having a problem with it. You know, um, I'm pretty much staying inside, besides walking to classes and stuff like that. But I've been trying to keep my keep myself warm whenever I can. So you may disagree with this now, and you may disagree with it in four or five years. But I've always told folks, if you're playing basketball and going to Notre Dame, this weather's great because there's no distractions. You want to study, you want to play basketball, and there's really nothing else you can do. So it helps your focus. Am I way out there, or do you think there's some truth to that? No, nah, that, that's definitely true to that. Definitely true. You definitely stay focused. It's pretty much what you pretty much have to do. Now, you had a great high school coach in Gary DeCesar, and he says your, breast, your best trait is your versatility. What do you think he meant by that? Um, just a, a high motor guy um, with that high high motor athleticism, you know, get rebounds, bring energy. That, that's that's pretty much what he means. Now, Coach the Caesar also compared you to former Irish forward Ty Nash. Are you familiar at all with Ty? And if so, do you like that comparison? No, I'm not familiar. He was a hardworking, physical frontline player who was very good around the basket rebounded well it just worked very hard all the time so it kind of sounds a little bit like well how you just described yourself yes yes definitely now you also describe yourself as a gym rat what does being a gym rat mean to you being a gym rat um, what it means to me is pretty much showing up on time just just working on your craft from every pretty much every single day um and just trying to get better from it so that's that's what being a gym rat means to me now, I heard your dad had the keys to a gym near your house so you can go there anytime you want to when you're at home. Is that true? Yes. So how, are, how much did you take advantage of that? We took advantage of that every day. Um, after um, high school, after the Zoom calls, after the Zoom classes, we go to the gym, just shoot and just work on our craft together. So as a self-proclaimed gym rat, what do you think of the Rolfs basketball practice facility here at Notre Dame? What more can you ask for? Really, like, Rolfs is a great place. I pretty much sleep in there. So, yeah, it's just really nice. Now, you've already shown you're ready to compete at the collegiate level. In fact, you made your first two shots that you ever took as a college player, including a three, in Notre Dame's eight-point win over Detroit Mercy. I mean, that's really unusual. I don't know a lot of guys that make their first two shots. What was it like? You played against Michigan State, so I guess you got some jitters out. But that Detroit Mercy game was really important. So when you went in there, how did you not have jitters? Oh, um, well, what was going through my head when I um, subbed in, uh, obviously, like, very nervousness. I was really nervous, but also had a lot of excitement. So when I hit those first two shots, I got, got felt my groove and I got going. So it was really nice to even have the, the guys back me up, the uh, older guys. So it was really nice. Where does your overall confidence come from? Overall confidence has to come from my, from my guys, my teammates, you know, coming in as a freshman, um, just have them having my back and just 
looking out for me. So that's where my confidence comes from. Now, you made your first collegiate start in a very important game in your hometown in Notre Dame's win at Miami. Now, I know there were no fans in attendance. It would have been really special if friends and family were there. But was it still special for you to make your first start in your hometown? Oh, 100 percent. It was really special because growing up um, in high school, I used to go to the Miami basketball college game. So it was really nice actually playing, playing in it. You know, this is this is what you dream of as a little kid. And like it, it was just a dream come true for me. And I really loved it. I took advantage of every opportunity of it. Now, as long as, as I've been here, the Notre Dame basketball team has been a very close family. And in particular, each class is very close. So you and Matt Zona comprise the freshman class. What is your relationship like with Matt? Matt, Matt's my right hand guy. Pretty much wherever Matt goes, you'll see me. Wherever I go, you'll see him. So we're just like two peas in a pod. That's that's my guy. Okay, now after the game the other night against Miami, I know I enjoyed it when you guys were out there working on your games and Matt's playing. I assume it was Matt, Frank Sinatra, and I did it my way. What's your reaction the first time you heard that? Matt's a big Frank Sinatra guy, so you know he put me on Frank Sinatra when I got here, so I enjoyed that too. So every time we you know, work out together sometimes. He always plays, so I, I just vibe out with him, with Frank. What's been the best thing for you so far about playing at Notre Dame? I mean, the best thing so far is pretty much the advice from the from the vets, you know, um, just leading me in the right direction because they're in my shoes. So, like, just taking advice from them and just implementing it, it is, it's what, that's pretty much it. You know, when Coach first got here about 20 years ago, I could surprise people with the verbal fast break here, but you talked about the vets giving your heads up. I know they've already prepped you to yeah. run the fast break. So here we go. Have some fun. Uh, I know you probably have been given some suggested answers. So uh, we're interested to hear what you have to say. What's your favorite all time movie? Oof. Um, I'll have to say any Marvel movie. I'm a big Marvel fan. First car you ever drove. Um, I'll have to say a Nissan. Favorite musical group or artist? Drake. Who is your role model? My dad. One thing the public would be surprised to learn about you? Hmm. I'm, I'm just a really fun guy to be around. I can kind of sense that already. Favorite NBA player? Paul George. Favorite thing to do when relaxing? Watch my TV shows favorite sport to play other than basketball I want to say play but I like to watch UFC favorite part of practice probably compete drill worst part of practice the warm-ups best part of your game uh, my athleticism part of your game you need to work on hmm Probably touch on my shooting. City or place in the world that you would like to visit? South of France. Ooh, good choice. I've been there. I think you'll like it. Uh, which is better in your mind, a highlight film dunk, blocking a key shot, grabbing a big rebound, coming up with a big steal, dishing out a terrific pass, or knocking down a long three? Got to go with the dunk. Absolutely. One thing you always hear from Coach Bray in practice. He always tells me I have to get a haircut. He always <laughs> makes jokes with me to get a haircut. As, uh, assistant coach, who is most like Coach Bray? Coach Blonis. Yeah. Did they prepare you for that? No, no, that's just right. that's, that's obvious, isn't it? Yeah. We got away from it for a couple of years, but it's right back, and I, I definitely see uh, the similarities there. All right. I just want a word or two about the uh, other three guys on the staff. Scott Martin. High IQ guy. Ryan Humphrey. Family guy, always checks in on you. Harold Swanigan. Jokester. Player on the team most like you. I don't really think there is a player like you, no. Okay. Best player to room with. Matt Zona. Toughest Notre Dame player to guard. I can't give anyone that one. I can't. 
Ooh. Best defender on the team. Probably between Nick or Cormac. Best leaper on the team. I have to go with myself. Okay. Best dunker on the team. I got to go with myself on that one, too. All right. Worst dunker on the team. Hmm. Trey Words. Best dresser on the team. Nick. Worst dresser on the team. You might hate me for this one, but I got to go with Matt Zona. <laughs> Best singer on the team. I feel like Dane Gillen could probably sing, you know. All right. I know this isn't a team full of singers this year. TJ yeah, really- sang a lot in past years. So this is all, this is one of the toughest questions this year, but who is the worst singer on the team? If there is one. Ooh, probably got to go with P-Hub. Okay. Best comedian on the team. I think it has to be the duo with me and Matt. All right. Guy on the team who thinks he's really funny, but he's really not. Robbie. <laughs> And our final question, free throw shooting competition. Who wins, you or Coach Bray? I love my guy, Coach Bray, but I got to go with myself. And that's the way we would like it. Tony, thank you, and good luck the rest of this season and beyond. Thank you. We will return to wrap up this week's Mike Bray Show, presented by Tyrac.com, right after this timeout. Tim Abramitis remains one of the smartest and most talented athletes to play for Mike Bray at Notre Dame. He remains the only player in Big East Conference history to win the Big East Men's Basketball Scholar Athlete of the Year Award three times. The two-time Irish captain scored 1,337 points in his Notre Dame career before his final season was cut short by a knee injury in practice after just two games. There are many in the media, including myself, who believe had Tim not been injured, he would have been a leading candidate for Big East Player of the Year in 2012. After being turned down for a sixth year of eligibility by the NCAA, Tim went to Europe and is in the eighth year of a successful professional basketball career and is currently playing in Spain. Earlier today, Coach Bray caught up with his former star forward from the great state of Connecticut. Thank you, Abro. Welcome, man. It's good to see you. All right. What time is it? Where are you? Tell me about what's going on over there. It's uh, 4.40 in the afternoon here in Malaga, Spain. Um, A nice sunny day, probably 70-ish degrees to make you a little bit jealous. (laughs) Well, Tim, you know what it's like here in your old alma mater stomping ground. It's about uh, maybe 18 degrees And we got about a foot and a half of snow on the ground and the wind is whipping off Lake Michigan. (laughs) And uh, I'm looking at you in that T-shirt and I see green leaves behind you. And and I know, as as I tell our fans all the time, you know, Harold Swanigan gives me an update weekly on all our Euro guys. And we have Mm -hmm. a number of guys over there like you playing. Give us an update on you and how you're playing. I know you're playing well and your team and everything. Give us a little update. Um, So, I mean, to begin with, the season's going. That's that's the most positive thing because um, it's kind of been on the ropes, you know, a few times this year with our team and and the general leagues having COVID cases. But, um, you know, the season's been a little bit up and down. You know, I think this is my ninth year over here and um, every year I could say it's, it's up and down. Um, And you don't want to say it's up because as soon as you do, it goes down. So that's just (laughs) kind of the, the life you live over here. Um, You know, we have a good team here this year. We've been playing in two competitions, both in Spain and our European league, the Euro cup. Um, We're actually on a little bit of a break right now because there's national teams that have their, their window um, and our team is especially hit by that because, um, we have guys from everywhere. So, um, for this week, it's just three of us here practicing. So it's, it's kind of a light week, um, which is definitely welcome for me now that I'm, I'm one of the older guys. Um, but no, I'm enjoying it. You know, it's, it's yeah. been a fun run playing over here. You know, I didn't, didn't know it'll last this long. I don't know how much longer it will last, but, um, uh, I'm enjoying it, you know, while I have the opportunity. 
Well, you are a veteran, and and we're so proud of you here. And and you uh, and we had Luke Herringote on a couple of weeks ago, one of your old mm-hmm. teammates. And like Luke, you have just carved out. And of course, he's retired now, and you're nowhere near retirement. But <laughs> you're just starting to hit your stride. But you've carved out a great niche over there in Europe, and you're one of the top prospects. And you've found a lifestyle and found a niche, and and uh, we we really love following you now. We remember your game from here at Notre Dame. Has it changed at all over there? What are you doing different that if I watched you, I'd go, wow, I don't remember him doing that when he played for me. Um, No, I think my game is pretty similar. Um, How I'm used is a little bit different because I'm primarily a four man now, which was, you know, I was more of a a wing guy, um, obviously when I was playing for you. Um, but the way we play and, and teams in Europe generally play being a four man, it's just like being a wing, you know, I'm right. still, um, have the ball in my hands. I'm still moving without the ball. Um, you know, shooting a lot of threes, obviously. Um, so, you know, I'm, I'm not like a post up for it's obviously never been my game. You're not going to see that out of me now, but, um, no, I mean, it's, it's, it's similar. I'd say. You know, as you're talking about that, I'm thinking to myself, I should have been fired for not playing you as a stretch four more because then we really would have been potent. But uh, but you had, you know, when I think about you, you were one of the young, you and Jaron Grant were the youngest guys we ever signed in in my 21 years. You were really young and putting you on the five year programs were, were pro- and red shirt and were the best thing that ever happened to both of you. I think it really it certainly helped you. But it was so interesting to hear the other coaches in the Big East because, you know, you weren't this heralded guy, which we loved, and we've had many of those coming out of high school. And then you were a register, and so everybody kind of forgot about you. And then all of a sudden you come on the scene, and I remember like it's yesterday, and, and, and to, to, to true confessions here, the assistants are pounding the table. you got to start Abro, coach. you got to start Abro. And I'm holding off. It's November. It's December. We're bringing you off the bench. And we finally start you against Central Florida. I know you remember this. Sure. And you have 28. And the, assistants, <laughs> the assistants look at me like, yo, man, that's what we've been talking about. <laughs> And the, and the rest is the rest is history. Um, you know, you have a great feel for the game. You know, one of the things you do that I'm always trying to get our guys to do more of is you move so well without the ball. It's a it's an it's a skill that young players don't appreciate, as you know. They just don't know how to just cut and move without it. And as a young player, you you really always had those instincts and and. Uh, and you were a great story, and and uh, and you and I know you stay in touch with uh, your teammates, right? All your buddies from back here. Yeah, for sure. I mean, we had such great bonds on all of those teams, and um, those relationships will continue for for the rest of my life, for sure. You know, the one memory, and and I when I do these with guys, I have flashbacks to your parents sitting behind our bench mm-hmm. on the road in the Big East, and I can still see your dad. And this was the great thing about the Big East arenas you could drink beer and I could (laughs) still see, we would watch the game tape and we would watch the tape and I'd say, freeze it. And, and there is Mr. Abro with a beer at Seton hall, you know, getting on the ref for cheering and, 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 you know, I certainly miss him. Give me, catch me up a little bit on your family and, and how they're doing and what they're up to. Um, All good with my family. They're still, my parents are still in Connecticut. um, Both still working. Uh, My dad, I think it was since since I was at Notre Dame, switched to being an athletic director at a, a small D3 school there in Connecticut. Yep. Um, and my mom is still working as a nurse. Um, she's been, you know, on the on the front front lines of all this. Yeah. Uh, since yeah. It started, but um, she got her vaccine and it's it's all good now for her. So so they're good. My brother's in Denver. Um, so we're all spread out, but, you know, can't complain. No, it's just a great, great family, and and uh, and and please tell them we miss them and and say hello to them. Just the how you know the the what the how the parents 
uh, of you guys all kind of did things together. Mm -hmm. You know, that was a great time for parents as well as sure. I think you guys, you know, traveling together to New York to the Big East tournament and, yeah, and those definitely. things. And, and parents really miss it as much as, 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 as you guys miss it. Now, what is your schedule? When, when would you get back in the States? How does it work with your league and the championships and everything? Um, it depends a little bit on the playoffs. You know, it, I've been home. Well, I mean, last year doesn't count because our seen, season got cut off, but um, I think the earliest I was home was May 1st one year. Um, but I've been here well into June other years. So really it depends on how our team finishes um, in the playoffs. So, you know, hopefully we go, we go pretty long. Sure, and, sure. You know, you want to get home, but you also, you know, you know, you want, to do on the playoffs, that's the top priority. Well, so. you, you found an unbelievable niche over there, and I know you're playing well from looking at the stats that I get weekly. With I, I got to say, it's got to be 10 or 12 guys we have playing over there, you know, and all at a high level, too. Right. At a high high level, level guys. We, yeah. we just, we really, and you know what's great? And I tell people this every one of my guys that are playing over there have their degrees from Notre Dame. And mm -hmm. when it's over, like Harold Swanigan down the hall and Ryan Humphrey and Scott Martin, and when it's over, they go, okay, it's time to use the Notre Dame degree. Luke Herringote, just transitioned into that, and they, mm -hmm. they crush it. We get them plugged into the network, and they get on with their life. And that, that's really been really, really cool to watch. Well, one of the things we're going to do is COVID crushed our – pro week that we had the year before that, that mm -hmm. I think Pat Connaughton did a great job maybe organizing. Sure. We are going to have that again. And it's so beneficial to our current players to be around you guys. And it's fun for me uh, to go over to the Morrison bar and hear you guys <laughs> tell, and hear you guys tell stories about when you played for me. Some of them I don't want to hear, but most of them <laughs> I really laugh. And, uh, but, I, but I want you to know um you know, how proud we are of you. We speak of you often. When Nate Leshevsky makes a certain move, we'll go, that was Abro. That was Abro. Uh, and, and so oh, there, there's all those reference points. And, uh, um, but nothing's changed here. You know, we, we, we've, uh, we've come back to school. I think our university has really managed the, 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 the pandemic pretty well. We're in class. And we're just trying to find finish our season. We're going to the Carrier Dome. You remember that place? Of we're course. up there up there on Saturday. And and uh, give me give me a Big East memory. Is there one that really sticks out to you? Give me a Big East memory. Big East memory. Um, I think probably two of them, both from the same year, were when we beat UConn at their senior night before they went on to win the national championship. Yeah. You know, Ben had any Hansborough had an incredible game and then fouled out with a couple minutes left and we just held on to win there. Um, and then our senior night that year when we built, beat Villanova Ooh. and uh, me and Ben both had great games. And I mean, the whole team had a great game. We beat them by a million. But well, that Villanova sure. game is still the record. We made 23s in the building that night. Yeah, you guys, you guys, some, every now and then that comes back on UND.com. You guys were firing the ball around, and I just sat there. All I did was substitute guys. It's one of those great nights for you. He looks tired. Go in. Uh, <laughs> and then I know it was always special beating Connecticut because your dad is a Connecticut alum. So anytime, anytime we course, played yeah. UConn and beat him, that was good for the Abro family. <laughs> of course, yeah. Those are the games they really got excited about. Oh, boy, your dad. I think your dad wanted to fight guys in the stands, but that's okay. That's, <laughs> That's why I loved him, and he was a rugged guy. But, uh, uh, look, I, I'm going to sign off with you. I'm proud of you. Uh, we're following you closely. And and please, when you get back, um, get out to see us this summer. We're going to put a For week sure. together and, and let you guys work out in this beautiful facility and, and, then, uh, and then pick on our young guys in a Definitely. pickup game. Yeah, it'll be fun. Can't wait for it. Thanks, Coach. Timmy, stay safe. We're proud of you, man. You too. Appreciate it. Welcome back to the Mike Bray Show. Mike, your team is playing very well right now and is up to 12th in the country in the Ken Palm Offensive Efficiency Rankings and up to 55 in the overall Ken Palm Rankings and 64th in the Net Rankings. All you need to keep making this move up in the rankings is wins, but to do that, you got to play. <laughs>
Yeah, yeah, I know. And, and Clemson was one with a higher net than us and one a scout that we would have loved to add to the resume that we're trying to make a run here. Um, but we lost that one, and, and you just got to regroup. And our, our guys have been great, Jack. I mean, they have – We've had a, a couple, uh, a number of them shut down because the other team has had a COVID issue. And we just regroup and get ready to play the next one. And I give our guys a lot of credit for their maturity handling all the distractions of it. Now, you were supposed to play Syracuse back in December, but the Orange had some exposure to COVID-19 in their previous game with Buffalo and could not play. So that game was postponed until this Saturday. The Orange have a net ranking of 53. So it would be a very big win to get at the Carrier Dome against the Syracuse team with a lot of familiar faces on it. Well, a potential quad one win, right? A road game uh, against the team in the top 75. A really gifted offensive team. They know us. We know them. You know, we know we both play very similarly offensively. We've got a chance to really explode. Uh, and then you're attacking their 2-3 zone, which we've had to deal with for 21 years between the Big East and uh, now the ACC. Then you are scheduled to play a talented Louisville team that is currently in fourth place in the ACC, but has not played since, since February 1st due to COVID issues. They're still scheduled to play this Saturday at North Carolina, and I know you have heard good things about Louisville being able to fully resume action. There'll be another quad one opportunity on the road. Um, the ACC office tells us that uh, Louisville will be back online this weekend. And and then our game Tuesday should be good to go unless something comes out of left field, which can really happen in this COVID season. <laughs> well, we will be really uh, wishing for the good karma for the rest of the way. Play more games. Mike, as always, thank you. The Mike Bray Show will return at this time next week to hopefully break down all the action from the Syracuse <laughs> and Louisville games. So until then, for Coach Bray, I'm Jack Nolan. Thanks so much for tuning in. Stay safe. And as always, go Irish.